Five Pitfalls of Starting a Nonprofit Without a Lawyer. It shouldn't be this hard to be a superhero. Hi, I'm Audrey Chisholm with Chisholm Law Firm. Here are five pitfalls of starting a nonprofit without a lawyer. Pitfall number one, you can end up owing taxes. Ouch, taxes, taxes. I have a client that came to my office saying that he wanted to start his nonprofit. He told me that he had hired a CPA and the CPA has filed his initial paperwork for him. Mm -mm. I immediately felt a sick feeling in my stomach because I know too often how people that do not specialize in nonprofit law can often make critical mistakes when it comes to structuring the nonprofit. Sure enough, when I reviewed his paperwork, I saw that his CPA had structured his nonprofit as a C corporation instead of structuring it as a nonprofit corporation. <laughs> Wrong. This is a huge mistake because since his organization was not legally structured correctly, he was required to pay taxes on any donations he had received. Since the IRS would see his nonprofit as being a for-profit business, instead of a tax-exempt charity. Ooh, ouch. So the first reason why you may want to consider hiring a nonprofit lawyer to start your nonprofit is so that you do not end up owing taxes on donations that you've received because your nonprofit was legally structured the wrong way. Pitfall number two, you may lose your IRS tax-exempt status. Ooh. Ouch. Unfortunately, this happened to me. Before I became a lawyer that helps nonprofits, I asked another lawyer for advice on my nonprofit. This lawyer did not focus on nonprofits at all. Instead, his focus was real estate law. <laughs> Can I get a wrong for a hundred? But at the time, since I wasn't an attorney, I thought that all lawyers are able to advise on all types of law. Boy, was I wrong. Yep, I didn't know. Because I listened to the incorrect information he gave me, my nonprofit lost its IRS tax exempt status. And we ended up having to pay and go through the entire application process all over again, simply because we did not fulfill all of the annual filing requirements based on the bad information this lawyer gave me because he didn't specialize in nonprofit law. Pitfall number three, you can get kicked off your board. Ooh. That won't be good. It's one thing to be voted off of your board of directors because you do something wrong or unethical. It's another thing if you're a founder that has spent your hard-earned time and money building a nonprofit organization only to be voted off for political reasons. Mm -mm -mm. This happened to a well-known nonprofit in my area. Their founder who had done nothing wrong and had built the organization from the ground up was voted off the board because someone else wanted to get the salary because the nonprofit had grown financially. Ouch. If they had come to us, my law firm could have helped them adopt Founders Protection Bylaws. These proprietary bylaws that my firm offers still protect public policy by allowing the nonprofit to have checks and balances as well as a board of directors, but they prevent the founder from being kicked out of the organization in bad faith. Come find me. I'm gonna help you not get kicked out. Pitfall number four. You can lose your name due to bad advice. Unfortunately, this also happened to me. When I first started my nonprofit, I wasn't a lawyer and no one told me that I needed to apply for a federal trademark to own my nonprofit's name. You don't know what you don't know. I thought that because I had registered the name of my state that I automatically own the name. <laughs> As we started to grow, I found out that three other organizations were wrongfully using our name and raising money without giving that money to our organization or our students. I had to go through the legal process of applying for a federal trademark and this is why I always advise clients that are starting nonprofits to apply for a federal trademark so that they can own their name and stop others from wrongfully using it. Pitfall number five, you can lose donations due to improper legal structure. Once again, this is not my first rodeo. We have another client that came to our firm because they had raised over a million dollars with the GoFundMe campaign. The problem was that GoFundMe was not willing to release the funds to them because they had paid an attorney that didn't specialize in nonprofit law thousands of dollars and that person did not structure their nonprofit the right way and they weren't approved by the IRS. I'm not making this stuff up. Instead, we were able to apply for them to fix all of the paperwork and they were approved by the IRS the first time around and they were able to get their funds. There are some nonprofits that were set up by individuals that weren't attorneys. But if you want the peace of mind of knowing that everything is done right and that you are in legal compliance, you want peace of mind, don't you? I always recommend that you hire an attorney that specializes in nonprofit law to help you get started. I know an attorney. I know an attorney. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Also give us a call at the number on your screen or check out our website to schedule a free nonprofit consultation to let us know how we can help you start or grow your nonprofit. It shouldn't be this hard to be a superhero.